Hey everybody, I'm Shawna Missy Me and welcome back to my channel, a self-improvement channel that strives to inform, encourage, and motivate viewers to start their journey in living and creating their best life. And today, we're going to talk about medical school admission statistics and what you should major in. But before we get started, you guys know what to do. Go ahead and press the subscribe button and make sure you click the notification bell so that you are the first to know when I release the next video. Uh, don't get me started. If you haven't had a chance to look at my previous videos, I'll link some here. They talk about frequently asked questions that I got asked on TikTok. I talk about how to become a doctor, just the overall process, some of the struggles and challenges that I had to deal with, a day in the life. So go visit those videos if you haven't had a chance to check them out. I've gotten so many questions about which one is the best, is nursing okay? What if I don't like science? What if I'm not good at math? You know, what if I've already started my degree plan and I'm doing criminal justice? I've gotten so many questions about what the best major for medical school is and I just wanted to clear the air once and for all and then also provide you guys with some data and numbers that actually will make you feel a little bit more comfortable in making your decision. So number one, do medical schools have a preference in what you decide to get your bachelor's degree in? Again, the short answer to that is no. So if you're not the type that wants to do a bio major or a chem major or a math physics major, like one of the STEM fields, it's okay because they're not gonna not choose you because you didn't do those majors. Number two, which major will better prepare me for medical school? Now, this is the reason why I would suggest a science major is because if you major in a science, not only will your degree plan most likely include the majority of classes that you need in order to gain admission into medical school, but then it'll also take it a step further and you'll be exposed to some material that may help you to understand concepts and help prepare you a little bit at least for medical school. Also, majoring in a science kind of prepares you for what you can expect on the MCAT. You can expect to see a lot of physical science and biological science as well as human behavior. Being able to recognize what the test is asking you quickly because you have a solid science foundation is an advantage of having a science degree. But you can major in something totally different and then just take those classes that are required prerequisites or that help you for the MCAT. So organic chemistry is a perfect one. Almost every medical school requires every applicant to successfully complete organic chemistry with a C or better, including the lab. And it's two parts. So organic chemistry one, organic chemistry two, everybody has to complete that. But a science major, it may be in their degree plan to actually take the class their sophomore year after they completed general chemistry one and general chemistry two, because they're following a science degree plan almost by default they will take organic chemistry one and organic chemistry two during their sophomore year which is perfect because you've taken the full course before you actually start studying for your mcat so you have a nice foundation of organic chemistry under your belt before you take your exam and before you actually apply to medical school now for people who choose to major in other fields that may not have that degree plan that automatically includes organic chemistry, you have to actively take those classes yourself. Your advisor is not going to say, oh, you need to add organic chemistry if they don't know that you're actually trying to apply to med school or if they're not familiar with the med school track and what courses you actually need. So you will then have to make sure you take those courses at the appropriate time so that it benefits you maximally on your MCAT. If you take the organic chemistry during your junior year, then by the time you get to the second part of OCHEM, organic chemistry, then you won't have completed the second half before you take your MCAT, unless you choose to take your MCAT late, which I don't advise because if you don't do well, you wanna give yourself enough time to study again and then take the exam before you actually submit your applications or before application deadline. So that is the benefit of having a science major is that most of the courses that you need as a prerequisite for medical school, you're already gonna take. And then also it may give you one leg up when it comes to having a nice science background and foundation before you apply to medical school. 
But like I said, I know a lot of people who did not have a science background and they were just as ready, just as prepared as the science majors were when medical school started. So it's really up to you and how much you're able to actually put forth and what effort you can put forth in order to get all the foundation and experience that you can get before starting medical school. This information comes directly from the AAMC, which is the Association of American Medical Colleges. So now let's get to the majors, right? First, I'm just going to talk about the percentage of people who actually apply with a certain type of major. So first we have biological sciences, which may include regular biology, cell biology, molecular biology, maybe marine biology, who knows. <laughs> uh, over 50% of applicants apply with a biology degree. Now what about physical sciences for people who want to major in maybe like chemistry or physics? About 9% of applicants apply with a physical science degree. Then we have social sciences and again about 9%, 9 to 10% of people apply with a social science degree. And social sciences can include things like criminal justice, ethics, psychology, sociology, philosophy, and then we have humanities which include things like history. Only about 3 to 4% of people uh, who apply to medical school have a humanities degree. But that makes sense, right? Because for the most part, if you go to get your degree in humanities uh, or social sciences, uh, you probably weren't thinking of becoming a doctor anyway. So people who have those degrees aren't applying to a med school. But it's good to know that people who have those degrees are getting into med school. That's the point, right? We have our specialized health sciences, which a lot of people ask about where nursing falls under. Again, about three to four percent of people apply. And then we have math, which is the lowest um, subcategory with only probably about less than one percent of people apply with a math degree. But like I said, this all makes sense because if you have a degree outside of a science or something like that, then you probably weren't interested in going to med school to begin with. So you most likely aren't going to apply. So that was the amount of people who actually apply with a particular uh, major or degree. But let's talk about the acceptance rates of those particular fields. So of the biological sciences, only 41% of people actually gain admission into the medical school. And if you compare that to humanities, physical sciences, and math, those people who have those degrees are actually seeing better percentages when it comes to being accepted at 46, 47% acceptance rate. Then you have your social sciences that is right, you know, neck and neck with uh, the biological sciences at 40%. And then you have your specialized health fields like nursing that is at 36%. In my opinion, I think that is still a uh, great numbers. As we know, like I told you guys, it's competitive. So uh, the amount of people who apply to a medical school, basically there's only half the number of seats available. So you're looking at about a 50% chance of receiving admission into a medical school anyway. When you take into consideration the number of people who apply with a certain degree versus the amount of people who actually get into medical school with that degree, the numbers are, they, you know, they explain themselves. So that is just for you guys so that y'all can make a comfortable decision in deciding what you want to major in and know that you do not have to major in biology or in chemistry to get into medical school and to become a doctor. So I hope this information was helpful to you guys. If you didn't understand something, please send me a message, comment below, or send me a message on Instagram. I'll be happy to explain and share some data and some websites with you guys. Thank you and y'all have a great day.